Welcome back to Academic Avengers. Today, we're diving into the amazing world of cells, the fundamental units of life. Cells are the building blocks of all living things. In humans, they number in the trillions, working together to keep us alive. Let's explore the two main types of cells, animal cells and plant cells. Let's start with animal cells. They usually measure around 10 micrometers, but can be larger in certain cases, like eggs or muscle cells. They are enclosed by a flexible cell membrane, allowing them to change shape. Inside, we find several key organelles. The centrosome is essential for cell division. The cytoplasm is the gel-like substance where many vital processes occur. Mitochondria generate energy through cellular respiration, earning the nickname powerhouses of the cell. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, ER, with its ribosomes, is crucial for protein synthesis, while the smooth ER is involved in lipid and hormone production. The nucleus houses the cell's DNA, the blueprint for all cellular activities. Inside it, the nucleolus produces ribosomes, which are either free in the cytoplasm or attached to the rough ER. The Golgi apparatus packages and distributes proteins and lipids. Lysosomes break down waste materials. Finally, the cell membrane controls the movement of substances in and out of the cell, with its hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails forming a water impermeable barrier. Now, let's talk about plant cells. They have a rigid cell wall made of cellulose, providing structural support. The middle lamella glues adjacent plant cells together. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll and are the site of photosynthesis, converting light into chemical energy stored in glucose. The large vacuole maintains turgor pressure and stores nutrients. Ameloplasts store starch, while mitochondria and ribosomes perform similar functions as in animal cells. The Golgi apparatus also packages materials. The cell wall offers additional protection and is primarily composed of cellulose. The cell membrane's semi-permeable nature plays a crucial role in maintaining the cell's internal environment. Composed of a lipid bilayer, it prevents water and water-soluble substances from freely passing through. Within the cell, organelles, vesicles, and large molecules are transported along microtubules, which are tube-like protein structures. Smaller molecules and ions move by diffusion. However, only a few substances can diffuse directly through cell membranes, prompting cells to develop specialized transport methods. Diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of higher concentration to one of lower concentration, naturally leading to an equilibrium. Active transport involves the movement of substances against their concentration gradient, requiring energy. This process enables cells to intake essential nutrients and expel waste products, regardless of concentration differences. When larger molecules cannot enter through active transport, cells utilize endocytosis. Here, the cell membrane forms a pocket around the molecule, enclosing it in a vesicle that transports it inside. Conversely, exocytosis involves vesicles fusing with the cell membrane to expel contents outside the cell. Osmosis is a special case of diffusion concerning water movement across a semi-permeable membrane. It occurs when there are solutions of differing concentrations on either side of the membrane, allowing water to move until equilibrium is achieved. The human body is composed of trillions of cells, each performing unique functions. Collections of similar cells form tissues, which group together to create organs. A specific example is the goblet cell, which produces mucus, a mixture of water and mucins, protein sugar compounds. These cells are part of the epithelial tissue lining the nose, trachea, and intestines, protecting these surfaces from harmful substances. Now, let's talk about cell division, an essential process for growth, repair, and reproduction. Cells divide through a process called cytokinesis, which usually follows the division of the cell nucleus, known as mitosis. Mitosis is carefully orchestrated to ensure that each daughter cell receives an identical set of genetic information. Mitosis consists of several stages, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. This entire process allows organisms to grow, heal wounds, and reproduce rapidly. Thank you for exploring the intricate world of cells with us today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Share your thoughts and suggestions for future topics in the comments below. Until next time, 
keep exploring the wonders of science.